Good morning. Welcome back to our Chronological Bible Reading. I'm Ray Reynolds, the minister of the Somerville Church Christ, and we are excited to be continuing our daily readings. We are in 2 Kings chapter 4, so let's dig into the Word of God together. A certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried out to Elisha, saying, Your servant, my husband, is dead, and you know that your servant feared the Lord, and the creditor is coming to take my two sons to be his slaves. So Elisha said to her, What shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in the house? And she said, Your maidservant has nothing in the house but a jar of wool. Then he said, Go borrow vessels from everywhere, from all your neighbors, empty vessels, don't just gather a few. And when you have come in, you shall shut the door behind you and your sons, then pour it into all those vessels and set aside the full ones. So she went from him and shut the door behind her and her sons, who brought the vessels to her, and she poured it out. Now it came to pass, when the vessels were full, that she said to her son, Bring me another vessel. And he said to her, There's not another vessel. The oil ceased. And then, uh, then she came and told the man of God, and he said, Go sell the oil and pay your debt, and you and your sons live on the rest. Now it happened one day that Elisha went to shoot him there, where there was a notable woman. She persuaded him to eat some food. So it was as often as he passed by. He would turn in there and eat some food. And she came to her husband, Look now, I know that he's, this is a holy man of God who passes by us regularly. Please let us make a small upper room on the wall and let us put a bed for him there and a table and a chair and a lampstand so it will be whenever he comes to us, he can turn in there. And it happened one day that he came there and he turned into the upper room and lay down there. Then he said to Gehazi's servant, Call this Shunammite woman. When he called her, she stood before him and he said to him, Say now to her, Look, you have been concerned for us with all this care. What can I do for you? Do you want me to speak on your behalf to the king or to the commander of the army? She answered, I dwell among my own people. So he said, What then is it to be done for her? Gehazi answered, Actually, she has no son and her husband is old. So he said, Call her. When he called her, she stood in the doorway. Then he said, About this time next year, you shall embrace a son. And she said, No, my lord, man of God, do not lie to your maidservant. But the woman conceived and bore a son when the appointed time had come, of which Elisha told her. The child grew, and it happened one day that they went out to his father, to the reapers. And he said to the father, My head, my head. So he said to the servant, Carry him to his mother. When he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat on her knees till noon and then died. And she went up and laid on him in the bed, uh, laid, on, laid him on the bed of the man of God, shut the door upon him and went out. Then she called her husband and said, please send me one of the young men and one of the donkeys that I may run to the man of God and come back. So he said, why are you going to him today? Is it neither the new moon or the Sabbath? And she said, it is well. Then she saddled the donkey and said to her servant, Drive and go forward. Do not slacken the pace for me unless I tell you. And so she departed and went to the man of God at Mount Carmel. So it was when the man of God saw her afar off that he said to his servant Gehazi, Look, the Shunammite woman, please run now to meet her and say to her, Is it well with you? Is it well with your husband? Is it well with your child? She answered, It is well. Now when she came to the man of God at the hill, she caught him by the feet. But Gehazi came near to push her away. But the man of God said, let her alone, for her soul is in deep distress, and the Lord has hidden it from me and has not told me. So she said, Did I not ask a son of my Lord? Did I not say, Do not deceive me? Then he said to Gehazi, Get yourself ready, take my staff in your hand, and be on your way. If you meet anyone, do not greet him. If anyone greets you, do not answer him, but lay my staff on the face of the child. And the mother of the child said, As the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So he arose and followed her. Now Gehazi went on ahead of them and laid the staff on the face of the child, but there was neither voice nor hearing. Therefore he went back to meet him. And he told him, saying, The child is not awakened. When Elisha came to the house, there was the child lying dead on his bed. He went in, therefore, shut the door behind the two of them and prayed to the Lord. And he went up and lay on the child, put his mouth on his mouth, his eyes on his eyes, his hands on his hands, and stretched himself on the child, and flesh of the child became warm. He returned and walked back and forth in the house, and went up and stretched himself on him. Then the child sneezed seven times, and the child opened his eyes. 
And he called Gehazi and said, call this Shunammite woman. So he called her. When she came in, he said, pick up your son. So she went in, fell at his feet, and bowed to the ground. Then she picked up her son and went out. And Elisha returned to Gilgal. There was a famine in the land. Now the sons of the prophets were setting before him. And he said to his servant, put on the large pot and boil stew for the sons of the prophets. So one uh, went out to into the field to gather herbs and found a wild vine and gathered from it a lap full of wild gourds and came and sliced them into the pot of stew, though they did not know what they were. Then they served it to the men to eat. Now it happened as they were eating the stew that they cried out and said, Man of God, there's death in the pot. And they could not eat it. So he said, Bring me some flour. And he put it into the pot and said, Serve it to the people that they may eat. And there was nothing harmful in the pot. Then a man came from Beth Shalshai and brought the man of God bread of first fruits, 20 loaves of barley bread and newly ripened grain in his knapsack. And he said, Give it to the people that they may eat. But his servant said, What? Shall I set this before 100 men? He said again, Give it to the people that they may eat. For thus says the Lord, They shall eat and have some left over. So he set it before the Lord, and they ate, and they had some left over according to the word of the Lord. Now Naaman, commander of the army and the king of Syria, was a great and honorable man in the eyes of his master. Because of him, the Lord had given victory to Syria. He was also a mighty man of valor, but a leper. And the Syrians had gone out on raids and had brought back captive young girl from the land of Israel. She waited on Naaman's wife. Then she said to her mistress, If only my master were with the prophet who's in Samaria, for he would heal him of his leprosy. And Naaman went in and told his master, saying, Thus says the little girl who is of the land of Israel. The king of Syria said, Go now, and I will send a letter to the king of Israel. So he departed and took with him ten talents of silver, six thousand shekels of gold, and ten changes of clothes. And then he brought the letter to the king of Israel, which said, Now be advised, when this letter comes to you, that I have sent Naaman my servant to you, that you may heal him as leprosy. And it happened when the king of Israel read the letter that he tore his clothes and said, Am I God to kill and make alive that this man sends a man to me to heal him of his leprosy? Therefore, please consider and see how he seeks a quarrel with me. So it was when Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his clothes and he said to the king, saying, Why have you torn your clothes? Please let him come to me and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. Then Naaman went out with his horses and chariot and stood at the door of Elisha's house. And Elisha sent a messenger to him, saying, Go and wash in the river Jordan seven times, and your flesh shall be restored to you, and you shall be clean. But Naaman became furious and went away and said, Indeed, I said to myself, He will surely come out to me and stand and call in the name of the Lord and wave his hand over this place and heal the leprosy. Are not uh, the Abna and the far, far, the rivers of Damascus better than the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went out away in a rage. And his servants came near and spoke to him and said, My father, if the prophet had told you to do something great, would you not have done it? Much more having than, much more than when he says to you, wash and be clean. So he went down and dipped seven times in the Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God. And his flesh was restored like the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. And he returned to the man of God, he and all his aides, and came, stood before him, and said, Indeed, now I know that there is no God in all the earth except in Israel. Now, therefore, please take a gift from your servant. But he said, As the Lord lives before him I stand, I will receive nothing. And he urged him to take it, but he refused. So Naaman said, If then, if not, please let your servant be given two mule loads of earth, for your servant will no longer either offer either burnt offering nor sacrifice to any other gods but to the Lord. Yet in this thing that may the Lord pardon your servant, when my master goes to the temple of Rimmon to worship there, and he leans on my hand, and I bow down to the temple of Rimmon, when I bow down to the temple of Rimmon, may the Lord please pardon your servant in this thing. And then he said to him, Go in peace. So he departed from him a short distance. But Gehazi, the servant of Elisha, the man of God, said, Look, my master has spared Naaman the Syrian, while not receiving from his hands what he brought. As the Lord lives, I will run after him and take something from him. So Gehazi pursued Naaman. When Naaman saw him running after him, he got down off the chariot to meet him and said, Is all well? And he said, All is well. My master has sent me, saying, Indeed, just now two young men of the sons of the prophets who have come to me from the mountains of Ephraim. Please give them a talent of silver and two changes of garments. 
So Naaman said, Please take two talents. And he urged him and bound two talents of silver into two bags with two changes of garments, and he handed them to two of his servants. And they carried them on ahead of them. But when he came to the citadel, he took them from their hand and stored them away in the house. Then he let the men go, and they departed. Now he went in and stood before his master, Elisha, said to him, Where did you go, Gehazi? And he said, Your servant didn't go anywhere. Then he said to him, Did not my heart go with you when the man turned back from his chariot to meet you? Is it time to receive money, to receive clothing, olive groves, groves vineyards, sheep and oxen, male and female servants? Therefore, the leprosy of Naaman shall cling to you and your descendants forever. And he went out from his presence, leprous as white as snow. And the sons of the prophet said to Elisha, See now the place where we dwell with you is too small for us. Please let us go to the Jordan and let every man take a beam from there and let them let us make a place where we may dwell. And he answered, Go. Then one of them said, Please consent to go with your servants. And he said, I will go. So he went with them, and when he came to the Jordan, they cut down trees. But as one was cutting down the tree, the axe, iron axe head fell into the water. And he cried out and said, Alas, my master, for it was borrowed. So the man of God said, Where did it fall? And he showed him the place. So he cut off a stick and threw it in there, and he made the iron float. Therefore he said, Pick it up for yourself. So he reached out his hand and took it. Now the king of Syria was making war against Israel, and he consulted with the servants, saying, My camp will be in such and such a place. And the man of God said to the king of Israel, saying, Beware that you do not pass this place, for the Syrians are coming down there. Then the king of Israel sent someone to the place of which the man of God had told him. Thus he uh, warned him, and he was watchful there, not just once or twice. Therefore the heart of the king of Syria was greatly troubled by this thing. And he called his servants to himself. Will you not show me which of us which of us is for the king of Israel? And one of his servants said, None, my lord, O king, but Elisha, the prophet who's in Israel, tells us the king of Israel the words that you speak in your bedroom. So he said, Go and see where he is, that I may send and get him. And it was told him, saying, Surely he's in Dothan. Therefore he sent horses and chariots and a great army there, and they came by night and surrounded the city. And when the servant of the man of God arose early and went out, there was an army surrounding the city with horsemen and chariots. And his servant said to him, Alas, my master, what shall we do? So he answered, Do not fear, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray, open my eyes that he may see. And then the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. So when the Syrians came down to him, Elisha prayed to the Lord and said, Strike this people, I pray with blindness. And he struck them with blindness, according to the word of Elisha. Now Elisha said to them, This is not the way, nor is the city. Follow me, and I'll bring you to the man whom you seek. But he led him to Samaria. So it was, when he had come into Samaria, that Elisha said, Lord, open the eyes of these men that they may see. And the Lord opened their eyes, and they saw, and they were inside Samaria. Now when the king of Israel saw them, he said to Elisha, My father, shall I kill them? Shall I kill them? And he answered, You shall not kill them. Would you kill those whom you've taken captive with your sword and your bow? Set food and water before them, that they may eat and drink and go to their master. Then he prepared a great feast for them, and they ate and drank. He sent them away, and they went, as, went with their master. So the bands of the Syrian raiders came no more into the land of Israel. And it happened after this that Benadad, king of Syria, gathered all his army and went up and besieged Samaria. And there was a great famine in Samaria. And indeed, they besieged it until a donkey's head was sold for 80 shekels of silver and one-fourth of a cab of dove droppings for five shekels of silver. Then as the king of Israel was passing by on the wall, a woman cried out to him, saying, Help, my lord, O king. And he said, If the Lord does not help you, where can I find help for you? From the threshing floor, from the wine press? Then the king said to her, What is troubling you? She answered, The woman said to me, Give your son that we may eat him today, and we'll eat my son tomorrow. So we boiled my son and ate him. And I said to her on the next day, Give me your son that we may eat him. But he has hidden. she has hidden her son. Now it happened when the king heard these words of this woman, he tore his clothes as he passed by on the wall. And the people looked. And there underneath he had sackcloth on his body. And then he said, God do so to me and to more also, if the head of Elisha, the son of Shaphat, remains on him to this day or today. But Elisha was sitting in his house. The elders were sitting with him. And the king sent a man ahead of him. But before the messenger came to him, he said to the elders, 
Do you know, do you see how the son of a murderer has sent someone to take away my head? Look, when the messenger comes, shut the door and hold him fast at the door. It is not the sound of his master's feet behind him. And while he was still talking with them, there was the messenger coming down to him. And the king said, surely this calamity is from the Lord. Why should I wait for the Lord any longer? Really appreciate you joining us today for our daily Bible reading. Hope you'll join us again tomorrow as we keep reading the word of God. Until then, have a blessed day.